And Mpumelelo was quick to say, we are in a crisis. In fact, the president acknowledges that. Mm. That's why he's got a crisis committee about everything. Yeah, let me challenge you. Why is the media so negative? They've never, they never report a, a, anything positive we do and so on. They, they, they had never even bothered to invite those people. Neither did those ministers ever bother to want to come and talk to these captains of industry. Welcome to the State of the Nation. I'm your host, Mike Sham. With me today is Dr. Unkhopotse JJ Tabani, host of Truth to Power and certainly probably the most prominent voice in South African journalism at the moment, certainly on uh, TV. JJ, welcome to the State of the Nation. It's an honor to have you here. Thank you, Mike. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, it, it's, a, it's an honor to be on your platform. Uh, slowly. <laughs> I'm, I'm the, the little one. You, you're, the, you're the guy who talks to millions. But uh, JJ, you obviously uh, have uh, built up quite a reputation as, a, as an outspoken journalist, something that's very rare on what uh, people would call mainstream media because South Africa, we've always had very kind journalism, right, where, where you won't push a guy too hard. You've had some really interesting uh, guests, some guests that have insulted you and have pushed back quite hard, and they get quite a surprise <laughs> when you push them quite hard, right? Famously had uh, the vice chancellor <laughs> from <laughs> yeah. University of Cape Town calling you some very bad names. Eh? Yes, well, absolutely. I, I promise we, not to call you used, bad names. We used to those things. Yeah. So tell us, you get to speak to uh, the great and the good in South Africa. We're in a very important time yeah. here in South Africa. How do you see South Africa from your vantage point? Look, I think we're in, in, a, in a state of multiple crises, right? And, and I think there is a general acceptance of that. And, and if you listen to all the parties, they're all selling us a dream about how they can solve the crisis. Nobody's saying all is well. Mm -hmm. including the ruling party. They're, they're not saying that. They, they, by the way, they are very good at self-diagnosis. Yes. What they are not do good at is uh, doing something about the diagnosis. right? So it, it, you find that there is a lot of consensus about the fact that we are in a crisis. In fact, uh, one of the guests I had just uh, uh, two weeks ago or so talking about the state of the nation, interestingly, because what, what we did is that after the reply of the president, we invited the minister in the presidency Right, um, we are quite friendly with the minister and the president, so I didn't want another friendly conversation. <laughs> I said, no, just come, but I'm going to invite two journalists. Right. Uh, because I'm actually not a journalist, and like, I'll address that a, a, a little. So I said, no, I'll bring two journalists, Mpumelo Lomkabela, who was the former Sovietian editor, as well as uh, Hajra Omaji, who's the business uh, day political editor, mm. to interrogate her about the state of the nation. And Mpumelelo was quick to say, we are in a crisis. In fact, the president acknowledges that. Mm. That's why he's got a crisis committee about everything. So there's a crisis committee on rail. There's yes. a crisis committee on electricity. You name it, there's a crisis committee for it. He even has somebody in his office to address the crisis of red tape. Yeah. And that person has a full-time job of red I don't know where he is uh, because he hardly says anything. Yes. But I hope in his silence he's cutting the red tape. You know, so uh, in a nation full of crises, the the big question is there is very little convincing evidence in a range of the manifestos that they will be different and tackle that crisis, and that's really what people want to 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 hear when they listen uh, to 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 the manifestos. Um, I think none of the political parties on their own is going to solve that crisis. That's my view. Ah, so it sounds like we can get straight towards the end here. Yeah. We're talking, I presume, then uh, about uh, governments of national unity. Yes, that's my, my, that's my view. I think that we're at that point where somehow, unrealistic as it, as it may sound, we may need to suspend the, the party politics just for five years. Yeah. Right, and find people in each of these parties because they are there who can together take us away from the cliff. I recently did a presentation which we've posted on our channel where I, where I suggested exactly that as, to my mind, the most li likely outcome. Yeah. For Partially for the reason that you, uh, that you put forward, which is the country is in crisis and we need to yeah. do something, otherwise we're all going to sink on the ship together. Yes. 
Partially because the people who could put that uh, that government of national unity together are in big crisis themselves, and it might be their last uh, chance to cling on to to power to mm. any kind of of power. Because if we look at the major players, and 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 there I was talking about a potential a potential coalition between the ANC and the DA. Yes. Or if not the DA, then the whole multi-party charter which might be an elegant way of selling this, right? Um, that's started becoming my uh, thing, that I think that the, that might not be just a coalition with the ANC, DA. There might be too many unhappy people if that, if that were the, the case. Yeah. Do you think there's space for that? Do you think it's something that, that realistically yeah. could happen? Look, I think, the, 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 to be honest with you, the multi-party story is dead in the water, Right. You just have to look at the current polls. So the, the current polls put the ANC just below 40%. Mm. Maybe that's extreme. But let's say they were at 45 or whatever, right? And then it puts the ANC and the D and, and, and the EF, the, sorry, the D and the EFF neck to neck, literally, mm. with the EFF maybe possibly eclipsing the DA or vice versa. That could, you know, they're neck to neck. So that can mean anything, mm. right? So if you then want to do a, a, some kind of a coalition government, it's not imaginable that you would leave out one of the biggest chunks. Where are you going to get the rest to get to 51? If you leave out the EFF, you know, deliberately say, to, you know, let's marginalize these ones. Mm. And then get the other people to sign to say, we'll never work with the ANC. Yeah. So you started off by saying you don't want the EFF. Then you got them to say, we won't work with the ANC. So what mm. are you doing? You are pushing the ANC and the EFF together. Yeah. Or alternatively, you are making sure that the ANC by default can just scrape through to 51% because you have fractured the opposition so much, right? That the voter just says, these guys don't know what they're doing. Let's rather stick with the devil that we know. That's why I'm saying the multi party chat was a bad idea because basically you're just talking about the, I, the, the, the IFP. I mean, those who have a track record of yes, some sort. Something. You're yeah. talking about IFP, IFP and DA and then maybe a little bit of action SA. You know, Freedom Front Plus, but yeah. Yeah, but that's tiny. Then you've got others, one man parties. Yeah. We don't even know who they are. They just imagine now to, 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 to create a, an impression of a big multi party thing. Mm. But this thing is ill conceived. If, if, you are, if, you, if, if in your mind you have a government of national unity in place, let me tell you why. Because if, if your, 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 your trepidation is that EFF's policies are, are radical and they are extreme. In a coalition government, that actually is is automatically watered down because in quali unless you have 50%, which is unlikely for the EFF, then you can insist on your policies that nobody else, in a sense, can support. Because once you're in a coalition and nobody is 100%, nobody can insist on their policies to a point where they, they, they dictate because otherwise they'll have to be outside, right? So the idea that because... These guys have policies that we don't like. We, they must be out. And you even determine that they are out before the election. Before you know what the electorate are saying is a, was a bad idea that all it will do is to push the EFF and the ANC together, which is what is called uh, uh, by John Stinnerson a doomsday scenario. You know? T uh, tell me about, uh, you, you mentioned earlier about um, you know, the potential growth of the EFF. Yes. Um, and certainly some polls give them... Yeah, might even give them the edge over the DA. Absolutely. Uh, in every election, they have been the polls have given them a higher percentage than what they've got. Right, y yes. and they're the only party from if. And I know we're not using like with like, but yeah. if we take the municipal elections in 2021, which I understand aren't national elections, yeah, but so most South Africans vote uh, similarly. Yeah. They're the only party that actually lost support other than the ANC. Yeah, but in overall terms, if you look at the national elections, mm. they're the only party that was growing other than, uh, you know, as opposed to ANC and DA. Mm. The others all declined. What do you make of their by-election uh, performances or do we not look at that? No, we can look at it, but everything is, is guesswork when it comes to polls because mm. you don't know how yeah. people on that day they will vote. One of the phenomena that uh, we cannot ignore is that because of a, a range of uncertain factors and also an issue of confidence and fear, the combination of the two, people may 
go to the polls and vote differently at national than at provincial levels. Right. So that's also another factor we need to think about, right? So some, you know, a party could get some good votes nationally, but lose the provincial or vice versa. Mm. So I don't think uh, uh, we can be dismissive of them. Yeah, that's all I was saying. I'm not saying that they will then get fifty percent. Yeah, but uh, if you look at the fact that they were, they, they, they now have audited figures of one million members, mm. and they've been serious about members uh, being voters because the parties with members, but those members <laughs> don't even vote for them. Yes. So here they have made a serious campaign to say every student who's a member of the EFF student command must be a voter. You must be registered. Mm. And they make sure that that's what they check, so mm. that. If if all else fails, they have one million votes, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And if all else fails, what if each one of their voters convince another they've got two million votes, mm. right? And that's a big chunk. If they have yeah, two million that's votes, 10%. that's, that's, that's yeah. they're already a ten percent threshold. So I don't think the Ipsos is off the mark, and they haven't Ipsos hasn't been off the mark most times. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they may not be exact because nobody can be exact, right? Because there are other factors uh, when the election takes place. Is it cold? Is it is it is it raining? Is it the yeah. holiday? Is it the middle of the week? They've got all those factors yes. can chip out one or two percent, you know, and create a margin of error, right? But EFF cannot be dismissed. Yes, that's a dangerous thing, and that's why I'm saying the moonshot could should not have done that. Yes, they should have waited, right, for the election result, and then say who are the best people to pull South Africans together. Now we I've spoken to many of the of the movers in that moonshot pact, and they mm. cite the fact that uh, one of the things that has has caused problems in where there have been coalitions is yeah. this very short window that you have to put the coalition together. Yeah, and that uh, what the moonshot is doing is put laying some groundwork for that. That yeah, you know, then if you do draft other players in, it'll be you know here's the here's the rule book. Yeah. Agree, don't agree, and sign and move on. No, that's fine. That's uh, that, that's but that's idealistic because yes. it assumes all those what I can call rats and mice parties are going yeah. to even get one percent. Yeah, they won't even. Some of them may not even get a single seat. Now, there's this this election will see some quite a number of high profile first time uh, parties. Yeah. Uh, what do you make of them? I mean, there's been some there's been some serious work done. Rise and Zanzi. I'd put Action SA in that mold because they haven't stood in a general election. Yeah. Boss, uh, Build One South Africa, MK. Yeah. Do you think there's going to be traction amongst those parties or do you think, uh, you know, uh, it looks almost unknowable to me? What's your, yeah. what's your Look, sense an, of these an parties? an election campaign uh, is more scientific than we think, hmm. right? Uh, you need structures on the ground. You can't, believe that your high profile at the national level is going to deliver your votes. Mm. Right? You need structures. You actually need people in every ward to go and fetch people yeah. <laughs> to vote. Yeah. It's as, as basic as that. Yes. Right? So if a party like Action SA right, only had structures in Houghton, they were clever enough mm. to focus on the municipal elections and just pick six municipalities because that's where they had structures. They had people who could go and fetch people to vote, and that 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 paid off. I mean, they've yes. got the sizable, uh, you know, representation. Uh, representation in the city of Joburg. I think they've got forty-four seats or mm. some big number. Yes, for the first time, right? So they they didn't bother with the others. Why? They didn't assume that because of Mashaba's high profile. Mm. In a place somewhere in Kofim Vaba in the Eastern Cape, somebody's gonna just vote for them because yeah. of that profile. That person could not even have a head of my shop. Yeah. Right? So sometimes we, we confuse social media and TV appearances and what mm. for actual support on the ground. Or yeah. even the rallies, the big rallies at the stadium that give you two seats for the people, all the people who gather, you've gathered. Mm. Right? So, so all I'm saying in general terms is those profiles are fine. But if any of those parties don't have structures on the ground, they mustn't expect miracles where they don't have structures. They don't have people mobilizing and contesting because the ANC is everywhere going door to door, even if people insult them. Mm -hmm. But they are there yeah, saying, please give us another chance. Yeah. And if there's nobody else who comes to counter that message in the whole cycle of campaigning, those people are likely to, by default, vote for the ANC. Mm -hmm. Right? 
So where the NC is going to lose is where the other parties actually have structures. Mm. Right? And I, I raise that point because parties like Action SA mm. have done a lot of work in building those structures. I mean, I've, I've been quite surprised mm. to the extent that they've built those structures. Yes. Uh, that's what gives them a, a, a fighting chance in yeah. a, on a national landscape. Yes. But similarly, Rise and Zanzi has done a lot of work on the ground, as has Build One South Africa. Even Chaluba has done yeah. work on the ground. Now, all of those have come in too late into the election race, unfortunately, because it, it, the structures is one thing, but as has you, has your message sunk in and resonated mm. once you've got those structures. And are those structures working? Are they disciplined? Are they going out there uh, to actually fetch the actual voters? To vote, mm. right? Sometimes you need, then, then you need a, a, a more oiled machinery. Yes. You know, EFF and ANC call them ground forces. Yes. For a reason, because those people are on the ground, they are volunteers who are doing door to door every day, etc. So I, I'm not, uh, uh, you know, it, it will be ambitious for any of the parties who have just entered six months ago. Uh, there's no history like that. If you look at COPE, COPE gathered about 1.4 million votes and they were established six months before the election that yeah, was, it was a special circumstance. that was an outlier yeah and a special circumstance yeah, yeah. because it was it was seen as a first split mm. of the anc right mm. now that became an obvious thing eff also was, was uh, i think it was established almost a year before an election mm. right uh, and they did well they were they, i think they, their first six thing was about seven percent or something yeah right? so if anybody um as, as to come six months before an election and we, we take those parties as a standard who, you know, truly stirred up emotion and interest and, and, and even curiosity in the public, uh, very few of these new parties have actually done that kind of seismic event mm. that would make people say, that's the one I'm going. So I think they will, frankly, they will get two or three seats yeah. at most, uh, 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 unfortunately. Maybe second election, when people when they have proved themselves and there's a little bit of a track record, you yes. can do that. But you know, all of this is all speculation because we have to base it on some track record or some 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 uh, in a sense basis of analysis. And here I'm looking at 30 years and saying, let's look at all the new parties, mm. right? Start with UDM. Yeah, they have two seats left. Yeah. IFP. I think they had 12 seats at some point. I'm not sure how many seats they've got now, but they are dwindling, mm. right? Uh, I'm not counting PAC, Azapo, mm. all of the small, yeah. it's one, 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 one seats, right? Uh, EFF is, is the one that, again, was a little bit of an outlier because it, it's, it's, its fortunes have been rising election from uh, uh, to elections. Mm. All the others still have to prove themselves. Action SA prove themselves, but at local government. Mm. We can't extrapolate that to national, right? But they stand a little bit of a chance. All the polls tell us, actually, they are talking 3%. The others, they just said, and all others. They yeah. didn't even mention them on the rad. Yeah. So, but this whole discussion may be moot because um, Quanto Wisizwe is going to get two thirds of the vote. No, this, that, that, they are dreaming. There's yes. nothing of that sort. What Quanto Wisizwe is going to do? Is that is gonna dent a little bit of the energy support in case at the end, but even that they will just be part of the written mice, mm. right? They will take away from the ANC, right? But if they didn't take away from the ANC, ANC was still going to lose. So they're taking away from whatever loss the ANC is making there. You yes. know what I'm saying? So if ANC was gonna get ten percent, maybe ANC will get five. They'll share the loss. Yes. The other parties will still triumph. I yeah. think case at the end is going to be firmly in the hands of the opposition. There's no doubt about that. But which opposition? It will have to be a combination, unfortunately. Yeah. There's no one party that's going to take a case then outright. Right? Now let's talk about your view on coalitions, because we are talking about coalitions. Yes. Provincial, national, etc. There's going to have to be coalitions. And, and yeah. everybody sort of points to the mess that is Johannesburg and, uh, you know, Kuruleni, Chwani to a degree, yeah. uh, Nelson Mandela as saying coalitions don't work. Yeah. What's your view on coalitions? Well, first of all, coalitions are not a, 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 a choice. Yeah. Okay, they are a, a patchwork that comes after voters they have, have not been decisive. Mm. So if we can disabuse ourselves of saying we're going to choose coalitions, we can't. Yes. You, you go in and, and choose whoever you want. Mm. 
but the, the, that whoever you want must have enough support to govern alone. Yeah. And so far, the trends over the last uh, uh, two elections, right? Uh, if you look at the local government elections of 2016 and 2021, has been that nobody in at least in the big metros has gotten total sway, hmm. right? So we are we're going to have to grow up as a democracy to understand, right? That unfortunately we don't have a system like in America where it's either going to be Democrats or Republicans, mm. and then we are all happy. It's fractured, you know. And as I was saying, the moonshot fractured it even worse, <laughs> right? So it's small bits and pieces, and 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 that's why you can end up with a mayor of Johannesburg from a party that has three seats. Yeah, and two of them have been mayors. You see. Yeah. So so so. So unfortunately, first of all, it's not our choice. So we're going to have to make it work. I like what uh, Paul Mashadile did to uh, convening a meeting, I think, at, at UWC a few months ago to start looking at, all right, it, because it's clear that we're going to ask coalitions, how can we make them more workable? Hmm. Because I think it's completely crazy that we, we, you could have a mayor every three months. How, where, when will they work? Yeah. Because in the three months, they're still orientating themselves about the office and where the door of the office yeah. is and what. You Which know, are the then, big tenders, then yeah. they get out, you know, and a new and, and and the problem, and this is was diagnosed by the by the planning commission back in 2011. That part of the problem is when a, a new political a, a principal comes in, they then change the whole administration. They fire the DG, the DG fires the DDGs, the DDGs fires the chief directors, the chief directors fires the directors, mm -hmm. and it's a mess. And then that person is there for six months and a new one comes and says, who are these people? They fire them all again. It, 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 it's, as, it's as chaotic as I'm explaining it. Yes. It happens like that. Yeah. You know, That's why the whole cater deployment thing confuses people, etc. Because it, 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 it's happening at the wrong places. Hmm. In the bureaucracy, by and large, you should have specialists doing things. Right? Yes. And then at the top excellence, that's where you can bring people with ideological alignment. So I, I'm not for this wild thing that says career deployment must be thrown in a dustbin. And then somebody's going to come and say, oh, no, 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 we, we've got a manifesto, but we found a civil, a, a civil service that they didn't want to implement it. So who's, whose problem is it? Why didn't you change the civil service to be the ones that can implement your, 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 your plans? You promised the voter. And then once you promise the voter, then you come with excuses. Mm. It, that's, that's what's making it crazy, right? In any event, the ANC has given Kedah deployment a bad name by taking the worst possible people and ask them to run something. Mm. You know, how do you take Dudu Mieni, who's a primary school teacher, and say, go and run a multi-billion rent corporation, corporation like, like uh, airline? You understand? Yeah. But you could have but there are many engineers who actually are ideologically aligned with you, who you could have you could have picked from many people, you know, and scientists and people with MBAs and and, and experience from mm. all over the world. But those people, because they are not your lab dogs, you said, Hey, we don't want these ones, or they are not easy to corrupt. Because remember, Kedah deployment at the heart of it, unfortunately, and it and, and it's not uh, just some wild statement. The state capture tells us that mm. was that people were sent in to go and steal. Yes. As they arrive in that boat, the first thing they ask is, Where, where's the procurement? Mm. Where, what's the latest tender? Where mm. do we eat? Not literally. I mean, you, you'll, be, you'll be shocked to, to if, if, if a, a proper investigation was to be a proper forensic investigation were to be done, you'll be shocked how many ministers have proxies everywhere. In business, you'll be shocked. You not you actually won't believe it. You you lose faith in the entire governance system. Actually, it will be a rare thing, as rare as a, as a snake's tooth, to find a minister who has absolutely no business interest. He's just a holy person with none whatsoever. Not a cousin, not a girlfriend, not a mistress, nothing. Mm. Mm. They are just going to work. You'll be shocked. That's a rare, rare, rare species that person yeah. these people are at night they are business people yes they are thinking about their pensions they're thinking about the fact that you know the clock is ticking i mean as we speak right now the amount of theft that's happening will blow your mind because everybody's thinking hey are we still going to be in power there's two months to go so there are two things that are happening it's two months to go to the elections one month to go to the end of the financial year 
I don't know whether you have come across a concept called physical dumping. Yeah. They're spending like there's no tomorrow. Yeah. Because it's it's you know the clock is ticking. Either the money is gonna back to treasury, it must go into our pockets, or it will go back to treasury. So we got to spend it. And then secondly, we need to do some projects that in case we are out, it will take care of us. Those are certain ministers, for example, who know that they are not coming back. Either they are too old or too useless to be appointed again. So between now and 29th of May, they are not working for you. They are working for themselves. They are thinking, how am I going to survive You know, once I'm out of the ministerial you know, mansion, once bodyguards are taken away, you know, some of them can't even drive. You know, uh, to save them, they've never driven themselves in their lives. Suddenly, those things will be taken away. So they are in a, a constant state of panic, and the theft that's happening will only know later. Yes. Because right now it will all look all kosher, but you, until uh, somebody scratches beyond the surface. Uh, do you think anything will ever be done about it? You know, if let's say the ANC does lose its majority, yeah. Do you, do, you, do you think? Its coalition partners would just be happy to pick up the, the 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 baton from where it's left and become corrupt themselves. Do you think yeah. anybody will have the the will to to prosecute? Yeah. Look, um, part of what why I like coalitions, in as opposed to a one party state, is because there's a, a small hope that these guys will watch each other and and not steal together. Mm. Especially if it's a multi-party coalition. If it's just two parties, they can together just steal. Mm. What, they, what they will do is that they will say, oh, you take you take city power. I will take Johannesburg water. Right? Mm. And, and, and we will we'll turn a blind eye to what you do there. That's literally what's happening in these small coalitions. Yes. Right? So, so a, a PA will come with his own business partners yeah. and say, on our portfolio, we want those people to be given a, you know, a job yeah. of this or that or the other. And then EFF will come with its own people, ANC will come with its own people. Yeah. I'm not talking theory here. Yes, well, we I'm know that because the first thing you do is you, exactly, you, you reinstate right? the AFRI rent contract in Johannesburg. You see, so now, now what, could, uh, what, 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 what would, would happen if it's a, a bigger multi-party, that kind of theft will be reduced because somebody will just, who, who's been excluded, Mm. <laughs> not only be, not also because they are morally abstaining. They've been excluded from the deals. They'll say, hey, there are deals here. We don't like them. You know? So so yes, there's a possibility that uh, you know that will slow down the stealing. Mm -hmm. But corruption is everywhere, just not here, everywhere. There's always a, a, a rent seeking sort of approach. Patronage is drives politics, unfortunately. But now uh, there's a you you can't do that without the com without the complicity of the legal system. Well, you know, people can can manipulate these things. I mean, we we one of the big things about the Kida deployment thing was was the DA wanting to scratch the surface to say they want to see who the ANC has deployed in the judiciary. Yes, <laughs> right. Once they have done that, then they will they will go and study what those people have done with cases, either commercial or political or whatever, or a combination of the two. Yes. Right? In other words, they are trying to say even the judiciary is not particularly innocent. Mm -hmm. Right? But, you know, we can't make those wild allegations without facts. But you can't rule that out altogether. Mm -hmm. Right? If you talk about complicity of the legal system, and you're not just talking about the judiciary, you're also talking about the prosecution authority. Yes. Now, uh, the NPA was was all fanfare five years ago. Mm -hmm. You see, we got now uh, you know, a new uh, prosecutor, etc. And the media has given that prosecutor a free pass. Okay. Because can you please tell me what one big fish has Batui prosecuted? Yeah. And you cannot come here with excuses that, oh, there's no capacity, yeah. etc. You don't have capacity, you just select one person, select one person send and, and one. send that person to jail. That's, that's something wrong with that. Because remember, the, 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 the judicial system um, operates by example. Hmm. Because it, it cannot operate by prosecuting every single crook yeah. who's wielding an okapi in a township somewhere to some Krukus defrauding Steinhoff, mm. right? They have to do. Uh, they have to deal with a world of averages. Yeah. In other words, 
if you are caught, you are sorted out and you, you send a strong message to whoever is doing the same thing you are doing. Yes. That's why, right, the prosecutor authority has been given a right to excuse you if you can show them the big fish. Yes. It, there's, a, there's, there's a logic to that yeah. because they know that the big fish is likely to try and get away by hiring the best lawyers, obfuscating the system for, for years yeah. because they've got deep pockets, right? And the small person will go to prison because they don't have, they don't even money for bail, mm. right? So you can't tell me that Batoi for five years with so much corruption, and I mean, it's corruption that is glaring, that is reported every year by mm. the Auditor General. The Auditor General says um, there is 50 billion rand and it's been rising. Right? It started at 30 billion, it became 40, 50, and I think we are now hovering on the 60 billion annually of money that is termed wasteful expenditure. Mm. Right? And of course, politicians are the first ones to say, no, no, wasteful expenditure doesn't necessarily mean corruption. I, I liked what the previous Auditor General used to say. He says it necessarily means that exactly. Yes. Why? Because what is the anatomy of this wasteful expenditure? There's a 20 million run tender. Instead of going out on tender, I bring my friends and say, just give me a quotation. Oh, by the way, can you find two other companies that can code just a little more than you? Hmm. And then I appoint you. And then I call it deviation. That's corruption because in that 20 million, somebody's going to get 3 million for doing nothing, mm. for just making sure that that deal happens. We know these things. So you can't come here and try and fool us and say, we spell if expenditure does not mean necessarily corruption. Sometimes, yes, there are genuine things. You know, there is a maybe a funeral that was not planned and you have to go into a deviation because the funeral has to happen in four days or five mm. days. So something you can go on tender for months. Yeah. Right, I'm just giving us an example, but on average, right, I can put my head on the block that if you examine each one of the cases of wasteful and, and expenditure, 80% of it will have to do with some or other questionable deviation mm. that was where somebody's handpicked, and then the rest is a formality. So I'm handpicked, and then the other people are like, uh, you know, in a wedding, there's what you call strays. Mm. Stray Macy's. Yeah. They're just accompanying you to get your tender. Then they, and they, sometimes they even know that they are doing that. Yes. Right? And there's even an agreement that should this process go wrong at the panel and what, uh, you you are the number two, but you'll still give us that money, we'll give you your commission and you get out and we still implement. It's as rough as that. The, the anatomy of corruption in this country is a tragedy. Now, JJ, you are... You speak to millions of people every week and you don't hold back. I mean, what you're saying today isn't for the benefit of me or the people watching the State of the Nation. You have not been afraid to say this on some very popular platforms. Why then do you still believe that the party that's responsible for this will get such a high percentage of the vote? What is it about South Africans that they are so comfortable with the knowledge of this theft at the country's <coughs> expense? to then vote again for the ANC and the other parties that are involved in this? Unfortunately, our, our, our voting culture has is, is, is not dramatically changed. So people are still having the idea that, uh, you know, I'm voting traditionally. So if I'm a black person from Mutuba Tuba, I'm receiving a social grant. I don't want to disturb that. Mm. Right? And the ANC knows that because the, the president at the beginning of this year and and I, I didn't hear too many media criticizing him about it. Yeah. He said, if you don't vote to the NC, the social grants are going to disappear. Yeah. Right? Now, that message, if it's simplified in my language, and I live in Zanin, mm. in a, on a farm, and I'm surviving only on social grants, somebody comes there, speaks to me in my local language, and says, hey, if you don't vote for the NC, you'll you're, 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 you're be in the streets. Right? Yeah. That fear factor has been used, unfortunately, up to now. The message you must send is to say social grants and those kind of things are the rights of those people who are impoverished. It's got nothing to do with what party comes in into into office. So let's you you uh, you most a guy that's uh, got a that's written a thesis of media and and politics, right? You mm. you you you're the almost the expert on the topic. Uh, what role does the media play in this? Because the media must assume, I'd imagine 
some of the responsibility. I call it the, the Kailitsha syndrome, where you can't say Cape Town, you know, you can't write an article where you say Cape Town is so much better than every other city in South Africa. But on the other hand, look at Kailitsha. Yeah. Even though there's there's a very, very easy explanation as to what goes on in Kailitsha. Very yeah. easy explanation. You've got a prosperous city that's running well. The economy is growing in Cape Town. People coming from all over on a yeah. taxi with one bag. Yeah. No accommodation for the night. Therefore, if you can't keep Kailitsha to, to a high standard, yeah. even if you try it. I mean, the same thing happens in every big city, you know, just about in every developing country. What role do you think the media must play in, in this, in continually giving the ANC um, a way out? Yeah, I don't think the media is giving the ANC a way out, actually, interestingly. I think the, the media is actually is very hard on the ANC, right? Uh, but interestingly, they are very hard on the ANC because they want them to do better. Yeah. Right. Very few media are hard on the NC because they are so violent. So in fact, half of these media people are NC at night yes. themselves. But they are frustrated by the NC for various things, including poor communications, including poor delivery, including arrogance, inac inaccessibility of some of the key ministers to talk. You know, I mean, I've been waiting for, to talk to the minister of DTI, which is one of the most important portfolio for years. And he always promises I'll be there, I'll be there. <laughs> You know, he's happy to do five minutes interview yes. when there's bricks and what, and he's, he's, he's shining. If you come and, can you come and account for the seven master plans that are sitting on your desk that you haven't signed off? He doesn't want that kind of mm. conversation. And he's not the only one. Yeah, I always think that it's, uh, it's the ANC's practical joke on South Africa that we've had ministers of trade and industry that hate trade and hate industry because you've, <laughs> <laughs> you've got to tell who hates business. <laughs> He was, uh, you had Rob Davies who hated business just a little bit more and Alec Irwin, you know, these guys are all those yeah. leather patch wearing communists, you know, yeah. they, they literally by definition hate yeah. trade and industry. But yeah. uh, I've, yet, I've never had anybody put it that way, but I can't disagree with it. I think that uh, uh, Patel has, his, his heart is in the right place, but I think that part of the trouble Right. Sorry, could, do, do we have to say something nice about somebody just because he's done a bad job? I mean, he's done a terrible job. Does it, care where, does it matter where his heart is? Sometimes it matters because if his heart was in the wrong place, he would have done worse. All I'm saying is... We would have had Malusi <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is, you know, uh, uh, we need to convert, you know, your nice intentions into practical things that people can see. Unfortunately, with business and trade, you can't hide if things are not moving because you can see on the economic growth. Mm. They've even revised it to zero point whatever it is now this time. Mm. And we are far from the six percent that the NDP has anticipated that by twenty thirty we'll have grown by six percent. We are far. We'll, we'll never get there at this rate, right? Mm. So you can't hide the incompetence. So if you had to use actual economic indicators to say whether trading industry is working, you'd say it's not working. If you mm. an exam, you would have failed. You would get forty, you won't even get a supplementary exam. Mm. <laughs> okay. So, so I'm not, uh, I'm not going to give him a charitable thing. I'm only saying he's a nice guy. If you could translate that into liking industry, as you are saying, and mm. and boosting trade, right? I would give him more time. But because he doesn't come to answer, yeah. we don't know what his impediments are, what his challenges are. Sometimes we don't even know what his successes are. Mm. You know. And then do you, do you, can you believe that he had the, the nerve, right? Uh, to say to me at some function which I was uh, MC at, to say, yeah, let me challenge you. Why is the media so negative? They've never, they never report uh, uh, anything positive we do and so on. And I let him finish speaking. And I said, when last did you meet the editor of the Business Day? Hmm. Yeah. He says, never. I said, yeah. So why are you surprised if he, he doesn't write anything that you are doing? You don't tell him. You don't communicate with him. You know, as a minister of trade and industry, that should be somebody you call every week sure. to give them perspective. Yeah. You know, and then he says, "No, no, no. Understand? Okay, I'll come to your show." It's a year later. Hmm. I'm, I battled. I mean, this guy. I was with him at the at the at a big conference in the in the Dragonsberg convened by Kalema Matlandi to talk about the the growth, um, what inclusive growth, whatever. So now suddenly we are now at the at the resort together for a weekend, and he still managed to bail out of that interview. But I need to go back to Pretoria quickly. Hmm. So there is something within the government, right, that has to do with a belief that to talk to the public through the media is a favor. Mm. 
Mm. It's not a favor. Yeah, it's what they pay. You understand? To do. These guys need to understand they work for us. Yeah. Right? They work for the public and they cannot go door to door to 60 million people. Right? But yeah. if they come and talk to you or me, they can at least talk to a couple of people at the same time. Yeah. You're not saying that they will always reach millions. Mm. But there is a sense in which people. Uh, uh, you know, can can just understand their perspective a little bit, you yes. know. Uh, and it's a, just really a very serious thing. When you talk about the media, it's not only about the media. It's about poor stakeholder management. Mm -hmm. A couple of years ago, I don't know if it's a couple of years, but long ago, I used to, the we used to work for the Chamber of Mines. Chamber of Mines gathers almost, uh, they are now called Minerals Council. They've changed their name, but I don't know if they've changed their habits <laughs> as, as a mining industry but doesn't matter so when I, I i worked there i after attending the first meeting of all these chief executives who are the captains of industry i was shocked at, at the, how they were thinking about government mm. did they would they really you if you sit in that meeting you'll think you are in 1988 mm. that the vile nature of how they just think how useless these guys are and what so i said to them hey, have you ever spoken to the minister of trade and industry they said, what do you mean? I said, no, invite him to come and talk to you. Hmm. Have you ever talked to the Minister of Finance? They, they, they had never even bothered to invite those people. Neither did those ministers ever bother to want to come and talk to these captains of industry. I think that has changed a lot since, you know, since 19, whatever, 2003 when I was there, right? But it shows you that the whole idea that government needs to say, who are my stakeholders? How can I take them into confidence and i like what the presidency has now done where there's a, a, a little bit of a committee that will that, that will help tackle rail tackle energy etc mm. but that did that took a lot of doing there was a point where there was just absolutely no you know a, attempt right to take business into confidence of what government wanted to do yeah, I've got a slightly different view on that. You're talking about when business suddenly got involved in these various critical works. You mean things. recent? The recent yeah. yeah. Because I've had a few people on this platform, you know, and... Saying uh, it doesn't work. No, no, no. I've, I've got a tremendous problem with them because I, I view the world in entrepreneurial terms, mm. right? And these are guys in big companies that uh, have never seen a government they didn't like. Yeah. And suddenly, six months before an election, they're going to go and help the ANC government, <laughs> right? That is pure straight state capture, if you ask me. And I had Martin Kingston here yeah. telling me, no, 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 we're not trying to influence the election or make the ANC look good. We just don't yeah. want to see South Africa go down Collapse. the toilet. Yeah. I said, well, where were you 10 years ago? Where were you five years ago? <laughs> Why now? Right? Why just ahead of an election? Yeah. What you should be doing in the best interests of the country, I'd imagine, is supporting opposition parties that yeah. are capable. But instead, business love to get involved with government, bail them out in that way, and I've got my theory on this that yeah. way, and I'll prove it with by... They then get to write the legislation, yeah, right? And that's why you end up with a really, you know, anti-business legislation within industries. You know, yeah. FICA, RICA, et cetera, that stop any competition from happening unless you've got a big company. So, you know, small businesses will, by definition, stay yeah. small because they, uh, the government is happy to, uh, to work with these parties. Yeah, no, I sympathize with your view, but the, the reality is there's always going to be an election around the corner. No, there's right? not. No, not, there not, is. Not, not there in is an because, election season. No, you know, no, no, in two years' before. time, there'll be a local government election yeah. where the biggest budgets are. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. After that, there'll be another election, which is in five years from now. So I, I don't think we can stop uh, uh, talking about social compacting because an election is, is near. That's why I was saying to you, if we do the government of national unity, yes. right, uh, we could start cracking these things so that it doesn't matter whether there's an election or not. We are on the common path of saying, how do we fix South Africa? Mm. Then there will always be a political motive somewhere, but we have to some at some point just remove the chaff uh, uh, you know, from the from from, from the wheat, wheat yeah. by saying, let's take an example of rail, right? Business long ago, before there was any election, the Minerals Council interestingly wrote a very scathing letter, saying yeah. that really the current CEO must go. In, yeah. You know, I've never had business so firm and clear. Mm. Sometimes they have that sort of generic and say, yeah. let's fix. They said no, this woman, 
push your derby must go yes. it's bad for business and then it took the government itself to come to that realization only probably an, a, a year and a half after that hmm. right and and they still had got rid of her right so somebody at that point could not argue that they did that because the election was coming because the election was far away right so i'm just saying that i i, I, I the execution may be bad or poor or whatever but i think it's important that business doesn't just point fingers from outside right yeah they should so fund opposition parties i presume no but it's, it doesn't make, they mean that the opposition That's what parties happens overseas. They, themselves will have a plan when they come into power mm. you ask the, a simple question you say if they come to power will they just pick up their cuddles and mm. continue stealing and that's also a possibility yeah. right so instead of finding anybody per se they should find all the parties because they're democrats right mm. but they should then say what are the things we can do together that is outside party politics and all of these partisan things yeah. right so now let's take the rail for example why on earth can't private sector be allowed to build another rail parallel to the the one that's run by transnet mm -hmm. there's no reason in fact uh, if we look at the state of a nation address not this one the past one the president made a promise to say that they are going to make sure that they can partner with the private sector so that they could be uh, they could outsource parts of the rail they can run Yeah, but you can't. You, you can't as a private sector. Uh, you, I mean, I th you know, as you know, I'm very critical of these big companies. Yeah. You can't expect them to invest. Yeah. When property rights are under threat. Because you know, um, and and that's undermining everything, right? So yeah. who who wants to go and build rail, when there's a chance that your property rights are going to disappear and then the country is going to go to zero. Yeah, they're, right. not, they're not under threat. It's been 30 years of a constitution that has, I think, stood the test of time, yep. right? So um, they, 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 they could be under threat only if you have a new government that can be completely on the extreme of communism, which all indications are that that's not going to happen, right? But so you're talking about them being pushed into the same corner, you know, the EFF and the ANC, and we know yeah. which one will win that fight. Yeah, but but again, there are nuances. There are people in the ANC who die first before the EFF is made a coalition partner. So so. So uh, would you build a rail if you were a, a corporate? Take that. Why pe press that panic button uh, when, in fact, all the indications are that that doesn't happen in 30 years, right? And secondly, even your own polls are telling you that uh, you are not going to have an EFF government, hmm. right? Even if EFF were to have 20% of the vote, they would not hold sway across all the parties who are there who will say, but that's not the way to go. So I just think that the, sometimes the business can be on an overly panicky mode. Understand that when it's your money, you don't want to take chances, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but maybe that question, when we, 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 can, we can talk in June after the elections, yeah. and then we can answer the question, was it an unnecessary panic to think your property rights are going to be, mm -hmm. are going to be threatened, right? The issue is that, uh, uh, the, the, and this is what business sometimes must understand, there will never be overall prosperity when the small person is angry. You understand? Yes. Because you can, you, you will, at some point, your big walls won't be big enough to, if, yes. if you like, to keep, Absolutely. I think there's a phrase about yeah. keeping the barbarians out. Yeah. Yeah. You need to be careful about that yeah. to say, how do we spread uh, economic, that's why it's called inclusive economic yes. growth. How would you make it inclusive so that everybody, even though they, 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 they can get the minimum, don't feel that they are so robbed and, and we, are, we end up where we are now, where we are the most mm. unequal society mm. in the world, with uh, people with extreme wealth and extreme poverty all living in the same street. Now, I want to just push you on the individual because that's yes. something that I feel very, very strongly yeah. about. And that is, um, You know, it strikes me that the thing that, that absolutely strikes fear into the heart of the ANC is yeah. individual agency of its citizens, especially black citizens. Yeah. Obviously, they understand that uh, for historic reasons that uh, whites have got agency. You know, if you shut me down, I can start a business next door. I can immigrate and assimilate quite easily, etc. But they seem to be terrified by the prospect of black success. More than anything, that seems to be the underlying driver, yeah. right, is to curb black success. Yeah. Why I do think, you... No, I think that's an, ex that's an extreme view. And, and I think, in a sense, it's a charitable explanation of the incompetence 
that has engulfed government. All these people, there's nobody who you can bring here and interrogate enough for them to admit such a thing. They yeah. all would want to move from a premise that says we want to make things better, etc., etc. Mm. Right? But they put the wrong people to do it. Yes. Right? When you when you uh, 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 explain it as a way in which they are ideologically they want blacks not to succeed, you are giving them a, a way out. Right. They want blacks to succeed, but they just don't know how to do it. Yeah. Right? They steal from the same people that they want to succeed because, in a sense, they, they, they are thinking of their own pocket. They deploy the wrong people. Nobody's saying don't do cadre deployment, but you, you, but you must deploy the right people to do the work, right? And then thirdly, they simply are incompetent on many fronts. Look at education. They have mm. 30 years, we still have a, a system that produces kids who can read and write, etc. Mm. right? But they, there's no policy document that says we are going to make sure that our kids are as dumb as, as Ferrut wanted them to be. Yeah. Ferrut was clear. Yeah. He said that no black yeah. women must go to school uh, to hell. Design, yeah. right? These ones uh, say the opposite. Yeah. right? So they, they, they speak left, yeah. but walk right. So don't give them a charitable explanation that, in fact, they sat in a room and said, what? how can we make black people mm. poor? No, they sit in a room and say, how can we, we create black industrialists? And, and then they go and, and, and then give people grants and they don't support them or give people farms and don't give them agricultural support. Those farms are now sitting fallow or they've become a, also part of corruption, etc. So I'm not for this thing where, where, where we, 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 we excuse them mm. to say, you know, they, they actually have sat in a room and strategized that they're going to make black people poor. No, they look at all their documents. A better life for all. Let's do things well, etc. Yeah. Right? Good policy. I mean, these guys, if there was an Olympics of policy writing, they would win it. But implementation, they are the worst. Right. right. So, so I, 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 I won't agree with you that ideologically they want to make people poor. No. They've got, again, their heart is in the right place, their hands in the wrong place. Yeah. Okay, so let's close off by playing yeah. a little game, you and I. We're going to mention the party and you're going to give me more or less the percentage just so people can be clear and hold us to this when uh, yeah. when June comes along. ANC, what do you think? I think 45, thereabouts. Okay, DA? DA, 18. EFF? EFF, maybe also 18, neck to neck, 18, 17. Thereabouts, um, IFP, IFP four or five percent, really. MK, zero comma three percent, and <laughs> Patriotic Alliance, maybe two percent. Okay, so mine, I'm going to say ANC uh, around about forty-two. Okay, not even forty-five. No, no, uh, yeah, um, DA. DA, I think they they steady at twenty percent, right? And yeah. I, d I think don't think that if you look at the by elections, they, despite the fact that both you and I have had problems with the DA, <laughs> uh, well documented. They, they won't they won't, you don't think they'll they won't be decline? On, yeah, so, sadly, so they won't speak to EFF. Me. Uh, so I'll give them twenty. EFF, I'll give EFF twelve. Twelve. Yeah. You think they 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 they're sort of punching. I think that uh, I think that they win public. the election on Twitter. We understand Twitter, that, yeah. right? Uh, but I don't. I don't feel that they. They. I don't. South Africa's never struck me as a revolutionary country. If the country couldn't have a revolution in the eighties, yeah. proper revolution. I'm not talking about a few little easy yeah. to quell riots. And if that riot in 2021 is the best we can do, yeah, this is hardly a revolutionary country, and it's also backward. This is 1950s stuff, not even 1960s stuff. Let's wear uniforms. Let's call each other fighter and comrade. Yeah. We, I've got enormous faith in black South Africans. I think they're creative. I think they have aspirations, yeah. etc. That's the opposite. You don't believe Ipsos? No, no. Ipsos is always wrong. So I don't have a problem <laughs> with Ipsos. But yeah, yeah. I, just the, my last point on this is that yeah. I don't see them resonating in a place that doesn't like disrespect. I yeah. don't think it lands. I think it's always going to be a fringe, but I do think that the EFF performs a fairly useful job in being yeah. the pressure cooker valve for the ANC, so yeah. it stops them from being completely crazy. So I don't see them growing, and I because I haven't seen the numbers that sway me, yeah. right? And as you say, 100,000 people in a stadium looks impressive, but that's only two seats in parliament. Yeah. 
So, you know, they do a lot of work, but I don't see them. Uh, they do a lot of noise. And also, you know, the fact is everybody by now must understand that it's not a party. It's a cult, right? There's never an election for the yeah. CIC. Right? That ain't going to happen. No, no. Let's, let's push back a little bit on yes. that. It's interesting you say that because if you look at all the parties that, yes. uh, you, you know, you, you, you've, you've, you've mentioned that are mm. new. Mm. Rise from Zanzi, Action mm. SA, two or three others. Those mm. parties have never been to an election yes. of their leaders. Yes. EFF has been to two elections. They're going to a third one this year. Yeah. And that CSE you're talking about was actually elected twice yeah, well, and may probably and be elected for the third time yeah, if yeah, he stands. Yeah. So, so I think that if, even if you may want and, to label and them... And he's a got cult, a number two, but Hitler had yeah. a number two. You know what I'm, I'm saying? Yeah. That, that's, that yeah, don't I'm just saying that the, the cult issue, uh, 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 you know, you could also say the same about UDM, no, you know, uh, who's had their leader for 100%, 20 years. 100%. You know? And the, the worst of the lot was Butelezi. All right. Yeah. yeah he, he, he literally tried So is tried it a cult to, or is it a South African culture of a big man? No, I think it's a cult because, because the ANC isn't like that, to be fair, to the ANC. They're not yeah. like it. So I don't think it's a South African thing. I don't think we have it in our culture. Yeah. And I do think that what that does do is, yeah. it, is it robs the party of the, uh, the necessary energy and I, new ideas and new energy. You, you think so, yeah. I, I do actually believe that you change yeah. leaders, like in a business, change yeah. leaders. It, it's, yeah, this one I think will lead to their follow-up well, uh, after follow the election. <laughs> so, so that's the main yeah. ones. And then just sort of just because people… Rats and off. mice? Rats and mice, I think it's unknowable because I think they're going after people who, who aren't necessarily in the poll. Uh, well, undecided. So undecided or, or haven't voted or whatever. But I do think that you, you, you're probably going to have Action SA somewhere 3 4%. Yes. Rise Zanzi somewhere around 2% and, and, and build one South Africa around the same. Yeah. I do think, however, that that is currently the repository for the much maligned clever blacks, right? I think that yeah. that is the place where the talent sits yeah. that would 20 years ago have sat in the ANC. Yeah. That I don't see. But unfortunately, the there's no mass appeal. Not, no, yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. So, so that's why I put them down at the bottom. But I think yeah. their work will be rewarded. And yeah. uh, no, they'll it? be good to have in, in 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 a cohort of the country's leadership. And the, and by the way, they don't need to even govern to make an impact. No, no, no I agree. as long as they are there to make sure that the national politics shape and size change. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. We've given our predictions. We've had a great discussion, JJ. Wonderful. Dr. Onkhapotse, JJ Tabani, thank you so much for joining us today. To everybody that watched this, please subscribe to the channel. We're really enjoying covering the election for you on the State of the Nation. JJ, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure. We'll see you again soon. Thank you for watching the State of the Nation. Mm -hmm.